All right, what's up, two valve bros? Video we've been wanting to put together here as soon as these intakes hit the dock, and uh, here we are. This is the new and revised PI intake from Ford. Yes, it looks a little bit different than the previous version that I have here to my left. Ford built this with all new tooling just because they'd ran this for so long and they really needed another service part in the lineup for the 4.6 or two valve and that's what we got. This is a service part. You can see here in front of me that this intake includes a bunch of stuff. You get a bracket, you get some Teflon tape, 195 degree thermostat, gasket, thermostat spacer, and some miscellaneous hardware. This intake is pretty nice. I would say sitting here holding it, uh, looking at it, studying it, it's actually nicer than the old PI intake. Now, I'm not saying that just because it's nicer doesn't mean it's gonna make as much power or torque, but what I'm getting at it here is you're buying a Ford branded part. This is typically some good quality stuff here, and that's exactly what it is. Being that it is now a service part, going back to the hardware here, it's all here. You know, you can buy this intake and put it on the car. Uh, they even give you the bracket. That looks a little goofy uh, if we own a Mustang because all this little extra stuff was for uh, the Crown Vic, and I think other uh, applications as well, because this will serve as Ford Lincoln Mercury models with the 4.6 liter two valve. If it was me and you don't have the revised alternator bracket for a Mustang, we sell that revised bracket. So if yours is cruddy or nasty or something like that, you don't feel like refinishing it, we sell that bracket, I'll link it below. And then if you're wondering about gaskets, here's your plenum gaskets. It's pre-installed, and then instead of the singular one-piece gasket like the old intake used, the new PI intake uses singular gaskets on each of the intake ports and the coolant ports. Also a change uh, is the type of material back here for the heater hose. Uh, and make note of that because in the instructions that they provide with this intake, they talk about what you do uh, with this area because you get a little bit of miscellaneous hardware. So it's nice that they do include instructions with this. So you're kind of not out in the dark on kind of where some of this miscellaneous stuff goes. Uh, let's get to the good stuff. Y'all want to know, you know, does it make more power? Does it make less torque? Does it make the same amount of power? Does it make the same amount of torque? Well, we're going to answer that. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, honesty is the best policy. We're going to be fully transparent with you. I think in a perfect scenario here, we would dyno the door an intake, take it off, do the old intake, or do the new intake, doesn't really matter the order. Uh, but basically dyno all three of these intakes on the same day. Fortunately, we don't have that luxury. Whenever we do dyno runs, we use the SAE correction factor, which helps us standardize the runs, even if we do dyno them on different days. The intake that we unfortunately had dynoed on a different day was the dormant intake. So we're gonna use the previous run that we have, but we did get new runs uh, with the new PI intake and the old PI intake. And when I pull these up, we'll also show the conditions in which the car was ran. We'll just start with the dormant intake first. And then whenever we had dynoed it previously on the 2004 Mustang GT, that's the same car we use for these intakes. But the dormant intake was making 222.4 horsepower at 5,200 RPM, 266.2 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. The conditions that day were 75 degrees, ambient temp, and the humidity was 66.53%. Go ahead and pull up the new PI intake and compare that to the dormant because that's technically the two intakes that you can purchase now. I mean, technically you could still purchase an old PI intake, you're just gonna have to find one used. The new PI intake, 233.6 horsepower at 5,300 RPM. 261.4 pound-feet of torque at 4,200 RPM. So you're looking at a, about 11.2 horsepower increase at peak, but you will see a slight drop in torque at peak. Uh, they do make power in different areas, although the horsepower is, is relatively similar. It's about a 900 RPM sweep on torque. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the new PI intake necessarily isn't a copy of you know the intakes that already exist. If you look at the curve, Early on in the RPM, the Dorman's got a slightly better advantage in both torque and horsepower of the new PI intake, but past about 4,000 RPM, that's when it starts to open up. The new PI intake kind of starts to come on a little stronger and separates itself from the Dorman intake, which if we look at the old PI intake, the Dorman intake actually beats this intake as well in the lower RPM, and we'll go ahead and pull that up. Old PI intake, 244 horsepower, 4,900 RPM, and then torque was 275.4 pound-feet at 4,300 RPM. So the old PI intake was making peak power right at 5,000, and it was making peak torque at 4,300, which is very close only 100 RPM difference from the new PI intake. The conditions that we had the other day when we dynoed both of these intakes, the old PI intake was 86.77 degrees uh, ambient temp with 59.23 percent humidity and then the uh, new PI intake it was just about an hour and a half after the old PI intake and then it was 89 degrees and 52.49 
percent humidity. So there's your data. Take that for what it is. Going back to the new PI intake. Yes, this is kind of technically a service part uh, for a lot of different applications. However, it's, it's a nice intake. Sitting here looking at it, the composite plastic looks nice. Aluminum crossover look, looks really good. And at the end of the day, people like options. I may like blue. You may like red. This person may like green. The other person may like orange. You have to sort through all this, take the data as you will and use that to make a educated buying decision. We're not telling you that any one intake is better than the other. I think we can clearly see how the results affect that determination of which one may be better than the other. And those are just tidbits that you kind of have to sift through and, and weigh and figure out which one you want to go with. I think at the end of the day, we're talking about a two valve Mustang. We're nitpicking, you know, five, six, seven, eight horsepower, give or take at 233. And, 244 and 222 horsepower. All jokes aside, I get it. You know, when you when you do stuff like this, you want to make the most power, you want to make the most torque. I totally understand it. Sometimes in the day in which we live, uh, this is what we have, this is what's available, and we kind of just have to pick which route we want to go and go with that. The dyno technical data should have put this way before. 2004 Mustang GT, keeping comp, engine has about 180,000 miles, uh, give or take. Uh, has a cold air intake, off-road mid pipe, Borla mufflers, aluminum drive shaft, 373 gears, an 18 inch SVE wheel, 285, 35, 18 tire, SCT strategy tune, 93 octane fuel, and all of the pulls were made in fourth gear, which is the one-to-one -one ratio for the Tremec 3650 transmission. Uh, there you have it, folks. We're gonna turn you loose. Comment below what you think. If y'all find value in what we do, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turn on notifications. That way you're notified every time we release something new. Till we see you in the next one for all things 4.6 liter two valve. Keep it out right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.